So when talking about temperature management, really what we're talking about is managing air or oxygen. And you probably already know that when we open up the vents, the temperature goes up, and when we close the vents, the temperature goes down. In this experiment, I wanted to go one step further and see what actually happens to the temperature and how long the charcoals last when I leave the vents set up in various different configurations. So for our control experiment, we're gonna light one kilogram of briquettes on a Pro-Q smoker with all of the vents open, and we're going to monitor the ambient temperature using a fireboard. So we can see that with all of the vents open, this charcoal burned really hot and fast. It peaked at around 205 degrees, just 15 minutes after going on the smoker, and then came down by about 15 to 20 degrees every 10 minutes. So we only had about an hour or 20 minutes before this charcoal went below 100 degrees Celsius. But let's now have a look and see what happens if we were to close down some of the intake vents. So this smoker's got three intake vents and one exhaust vent. So I'm gonna close down two of the three intake vents. We still have airflow going through the smoker, but much less. So with just one of the three intake vents open, we can see that the temperature temperature peaked a little bit lower, about 195 degrees Celsius, but then came down at a slower rate. We had about two hours, 20 minutes before the temperature dipped below 100 degrees Celsius. And if we look at these side by side, we can see the difference here. How with all of the vents open, we peaked a little bit higher, but then came down a lot sooner. Whereas when we start closing down some of those intake vents, we don't get as high temperatures, but the temperature remains stable for a far longer time. So next we're gonna see what happens when we leave all the intake vents open, but we shut down the exhaust vent. Now this is a pretty terrible idea to do when actually cooking, because it means we don't have very good airflow. So we have poor combustion, which produces a dirtier smoke. So we get more kind of soot, more creosote, which gives a really bitter taste to the food. And ultimately we don't have anywhere for the air to escape. So all the gases that we're producing the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, the smoke, doesn't really have anywhere to go, so it just makes the food taste worse. But in the interest of science, let's try this out and see what happens. So this one surprised me. The temperature peaked at 168 degrees, so much cooler than the last two experiments we ran, which I would have expected. But then the temperature remained pretty stable after that point. It came down actually at a slower rate than the last experiment when we had the intake vents shut down. I expected that by shutting down the exhaust vent, we would have seen the temperature plummet quite quickly, but it didn't, it remained pretty stable. And Although this experiment is a bit of an academic one because hopefully we would never cook this way, it shows why this kind of experimentation is really helpful as a way of understanding your pit, understanding how certain changes affect the temperature. So in this experiment, we looked at how to use the vents on our pit to control the temperature. And that's because the vents are the most impactful way that we can affect the temperature throughout a cook. But it's not the only tool that we have. We can add a water pan, we can change the amount of fuel we use, we can even change the type of fuel we use. And if you haven't watched it already, I'd highly recommend watching this video where I tested seven different types of charcoal to see how changing the type of charcoal we use can affect the temperature.